Hey, it is Professor Sheehan, and I am just starting to mix Mr. Tenedo's fine song by your side. Some of the projects that I listened to, some of the mixes of this reminded me of some things I wanted to go over. Um, mostly would be review, maybe some new things that you haven't been exposed to before. Um, just starting by organizing the session a bit, got my color coding going on. I moved a few things around. I put the bass, dragged it over next to the drums, so I got the rhythm section together. I just made this augs input, which I'm going to drag over to the right. Part of my organizing would be doing things like the click track. I don't need that at this point. So I'm going to go and make that inactive, pulling that out of the track menu. And I'm going to hide it where the track listing is here. Get the click out of there. Um, of course, I'm going to put a reverb on this augs. Um, sometimes I like to just use one reverb for the whole mix. Uh, I'll go by the old standby, the old good old D-verb here. Let's try out a, one of the plates. Turn up this input. I don't really know why they always have it down 4 dB like that. I'll, I'll label it verb and we'll tell it to come in from a pair of buses. Uh, but why not bus 1 and 2? Okay, uh, let's assign bus 1 and 2 to the sends on everything else. Uh, so I'm going to hold down option as I do this. That's going to put them across the boards. First thing I always do then is I remove it from the auxiliary that the reverb is on because I don't want to send signal into it. I want it to pull signal from these various other tracks. So the other thing I'll do at this point is I will go to my view menu and show send A as an expanded send. So I get all the sends right there. And I did a bit of panning and mostly what I did was the way Dan recorded was he kind of has everything balanced. If there's something left, there's everything's kind of stereo mic'd. So in most cases, I've just got things going either hard left and right or different degrees left and right. I might decide to change that where there's a couple of rhythm guitars here and I might balance it that one's more left, one's more right. Kind of have it like that way with the keyboards. Uh, we have a low part and a high part here and I'm balancing the low part left and the high part right which is kind of like if you were miking a piano it would tend to turn out that way. Now one thing is that Dan did that's interesting is he recorded the lead vocal with two mics at the same time onto a stereo track. I actually took a look I zoomed in to see are these things in phase with each other or are they out of phase. Zoom in even more. Got the single zoom selected. Let's put it on normal zoom so I can keep zooming on in. You can see that it's in phase. It's pretty much the same waveform. Slightly different, but it is in phase. So that's good. I don't like having them embedded on one track though. In fact, one of them is uh, generally a little bit louder than the other. I mean, they're not too far off, but... I'm going to put these on two separate tracks. So I'm going to go track and make two new mono tracks. And it conveniently put them right below. So I can drag this down here and have it split out onto those. So I'll get rid of this stereo track and I'll relabel this uh, vocal lead one and vocal lead two and I'm probably not going to use both of them together at the same time but maybe I'll like one mic better for the chorus or one for the verse. Let's actually give them a listen. Let's solo uh, some vocal with the first mic. When you feel like giving up Just know you're not done when you feel the pain inside just so i think daniel recorded that through a preamp but we're getting a little harmonic distortion in there harmonic distortion can sound cool it's not like uh it's an analog form of distortion it's not nasty digital distortion um but it makes his voice sound you know really rocked out uh let's try down below the same exact thing let's see what that track sounds like when you feel like giving up 
Just know you're not done When you feel that pain inside Just So, I think the first one is a little rounder sounding uh, and the one below is a little more cutting so if we have a section of the song where the vocal needs to cut through more then we might go with that mic okay so in this video I'm gonna be going over some things that I found across a few of the mixes I heard one of the things was the kick drum sometimes wasn't cutting through in the mix so I'm gonna take a moment and discuss EQing the kick drum. So that's the track all the way on the left. It's soloed right now, and I have an EQ on it. So let me explain what I've done here. I have three adjustments. The two boosts you see are a boost at 80 hertz. Notice that I'm using a peak EQ, not a shelf, right? That would be a shelf. I'm using the peak because I don't want to boost all the low frequencies. I want to boost the well-defined low frequencies. And then I've got a boost up here around 2.5 kilohertz. Why would I boost a kick drum, a bass drum? It's got the word bass in it. Why would I boost it up there? That's where the slap attack's going to be. And then I have a scoop in the middle where I'm cutting some 400 hertz out. That's with this band over here. And actually, the article I assigned you to read this past week suggests doing that because you do get some muddy qualities in there. So for a lot of instruments, the mud is more at like 250, but a lot of times for kick drum, right around 400. So let's play this. Let me bypass this and play a little bit of the kick drum. Let me make sure I've got some kick drum highlighted here uh, without the EQ, and then we'll turn it on and see what those different bands are doing. Okay, now I've got the EQ back on. Let's see what that sounds like. All right, so I like that Elysian solo. Uh, how did I find the exact frequencies? Um, basically, by playing and moving the frequency control around you can actually move the knob or I can move it on the graph and listening for where I hear the sound that I'm looking for either to boost or to cut and that would be called sweeping a lot of times when you sweep you really exaggerate the gain and narrow the cue and maybe not that much but uh, that's really exaggerated move this around all right now the thing is we got to do our bass management so we want to I'm going to temporarily move the bass guitar right below the kick drum and I'm gonna uh, put an EQ on there as well I'm gonna switch my mix window sorry my edit window to show inserts so I don't have to go to the mix window and I can go ahead and put an EQ right on there I got a lot of choices but I like these ones that come with Pro Tools so the key thing here is to let me actually have both EQs open at the same time I'm going to hold down shift and open the second one. I'm going to kind of line them up actually. And visually I'm going to make sure the graphs don't overlap. I want them to sound tonally distinct from each other. So that's not going to happen if they are EQ'd the same. They have to be EQ'd distinctly from each other. Okay, so now let's look at the bass EQ. Uh, I don't have that much going on. I do have a low end boost. Uh, main thing I want to show you though is that it's not the same frequency that I'm boosting on the kick drum. The kick drum is boosted around 80, and this is more around 100, it's actually 108 if we look over here. And 108 on the kick drum doesn't have much going on. So the point is to not overlap them. One thing I actually could also do is even cut with the high pass filter, cut out some of the extreme lows to really let the kick drum have that space. Let's see how that sounds. So 
So I'm actually high pass filtering low cut on the bass and then give it a little more oomph around 108 whereas the kick drums got it going on around 80. Not overlapping is the key there. The key to no masking. Okay, now let's deal with the intro to the song. The intro to the song just has the main vocal and a guitar and some keyboard and there's not even drums or bass, no rhythm section kicking in. Yet on some of the projects I had trouble hearing the vocal through the guitars and the keys. In some projects the vocal was clear but it was because folks did something like this with the EQ. Right, they threw on an EQ and maybe you swept around and you ended up boosting something probably around two and a half kilohertz. All right, let's uh, let's solo this vocal a moment and play it with no EQ and then with a boost in that area. When you got too much going on. And it's been going for much too long. You can't take one breath and I slow you down. Okay, so when we don't have that EQ boost right there, it's like the vocal sounds nice and mellow and dark and mysterious. And then when we put it in, it sounds kind of nasally. When you got too much going on And it's been going for much too long You can't take one breath and I slow you down I don't know too many singers that want to sound nasally, but this makes it cut through, but it brings out nasally tones, which is actually what an SM57 or 58 mic will do largely as well. But that's one reason we don't use them in the studio. We use them for live to help things cut through. But in the studio where you can sculpt things a bit more, uh, you don't really have to do that. What you can do is go to the guitar tracks that it's competing with and cut the vocal presence range around two and a half kilohertz. Let's turn this on and put an EQ on there. And let's try giving that a cut up in this area. Uh, right around two and a half kilohertz was where I found the vocal presence on the voice. And let's let's do that on the other one as well, the other guitar track. Just gonna option and then drag, copy that EQ. I might want to actually EQ them separately. Actually, it's down here. Okay. Uh, but for now, I'll start with that as a reference point. Uh, so let's bypass the EQs and see what's going on. When you got too much go Can't take one breath and I slow you down When you got too much going on and It's been going for much too long can't take one breath and I slow you down. So I do hear that the vocal cuts through it a bit better now. And that's without even a compressor on the vocal. Let's go ahead and put a compressor on it. Uh, which one do we want to use? You know, let's go. Let's keep going with the freebies. Put this one on it. When you got too much going on and It's been going for much too long 
You can't take one breath that might slow you down. Now, if I want some more upper end on the guitars, I, I could find other frequencies to boost that are not in the vocal presence range. Um, let's see how that sounds. I'll do that on the other guitar track also. When you got too much going on, and it's been going for much too long You can't take one breath that might slow you down Alright, so the overall theme here, as with the kick and the bass, is to avoid masking to make these things more tonally distinct from each other, to use subtractive EQing, to deal with frequencies that are masking each other. Okay, so another thing I noticed in some of the projects was that things were overcompressed. Compressors were squashing the life out of things. The bass guitar is a good example of this. Uh, this is a compressor. Again, I'm going with the freebie that you get with Pro Tools, because why not? And I have a little bit of bass highlighted here. And here it is without any compression. It does have the EQ that we put on before. Okay, now let's turn on the compressor. And I have it purposely set to be kind of over compressing so you can really hear the difference. Okay, so that sounds quite lousy. Uh, it even has like this buzz that's sustaining out and everything. Okay, so let's talk about why that is. So let's zoom in on the bass waveform for a moment. Zoom in real close. Alright, so it's all about sound envelope. So in here we have the attack, and then we have the decay, and then we have the sustain. There's no release because he's hitting another note before it would release. But we got attack, decay, and sustain. And since the compressor evens out volume, uh, obviously the attack is naturally louder than the sustain. But when you're evening that out, you're kind of killing that relationship. So we're losing attack and we're getting all sustain. Um, so that's why it just kind of like sounds like it's lingering on too much and, and it's not like you hear the distinction of every note. I'm kind of thinking maybe this is recorded with some compression so we can probably go with any light compression if we need compression at all. So i will go with a lower ratio and as far as the threshold I would set that so that we have maybe a little bit of swing on the gain reduction meter. So let's turn that up a bit. Okay, so the solution is lower the threshold so the gain reduction meter is not hitting way down here, that it's hitting more up here. And I raised the attack to let the attack of the notes cut through a bit, and I lowered the release so that it's not holding the compression in and giving us all that sustain. And I also lowered the ratio to a just more reasonable level. Alright, just another comment about compression in general is this song is, you know, it starts out pretty gently and then it gets into this bit of a lift once the drums come in and then the chorus is really rocking out. And if you're compressing things too much, we're not going to feel those lifts quite as much. So you want to be careful both with mixing and mastering that you're not killing the dynamic range of the song. Okay, so the other thing I want to deal with is reverb. So earlier, 
you saw I made a reverb augs. Let's get the mix window showing everything here. So here it is over here. Uh, you could do like different reverb for drums, different one for vocals, blah, blah, blah. But I'm just going to keep it simple and go with one reverb. And let's listen to it without, right now nothing is being sent to the reverb. So let's listen to a little bit of the song without it. Okay, so let's get to some vocals now. I have some vocal tracks soloed. One thing I came to realize is that they were a little bit mislabeled in this session. In fact, you see I moved, there's this big gaping hole there. These are things I moved up to these tracks because they really belonged with them. And not to rag on Dan, but I don't know why these tracks are called Harmony. They're actually just lead vocals on the choruses. And again, I didn't really feel a need for two mics. I auditioned the two mics and I picked one of them and I relabeled it chorus over here. And then these are really the harmonies, these different ahs. So I listened to those and the first one was low, then it was a higher interval and an even higher interval. So what I did with the panning was the higher pitch ones, I panned more off to the side because they are just going to, you know, higher frequencies pan better than lower frequencies. So you tend to want to put the high stuff more out to the side. What I might do is pan this one here and weigh it even more to the left because between this ah uh and this ah, uh, those are going to be weighed to the right. So I'm also thinking in terms of distributing things across the spectrum. So what I'm also doing is I'm doing reverb. You notice my reverb box has the solo button is grayed out and that's by hitting command and that will put it in solo safe mode so that when you solo other tracks you're not accidentally muting the reverb so check out my sends here I've got the lead vocal has a healthy amount of reverb on it and then I'm putting more reverb on the Oz because that's gonna push them farther back putting more reverb will make them sound a little farther away with the main vocal a bit closer so let's give that a listen when you feel like giving up, just know you're not done. When you feel the pain inside, just know I'm by your side. Oh, just know I'm by your side. Okay, now let's listen to that without any reverb. We'll just mute the reverb ogs and we'll play it again. When you feel like giving up, just know you're not done. When you feel the pain inside, just know I'm by your side. So yeah, reverb is your friend. Now, we're doing it on vocals, but don't think of reverb as a vocal thing. Another thing I heard in a project or two was the vocal sounded like they were further away and the instruments close up because the instruments have very little reverb on them. No, you want to, I'm going to start moving the reverb sends on the instruments. Give me a minute to do that. When you feel like giving up, just know you're not done. When you feel the pain inside, just know I'm by.
I just messed around with the reverb real quickly. Let me explain my basic approach. Uh, I do not have any reverb on the bass guitar or the kick drum because reverb will wash out low instruments. If I do want a little, I can put a little bit, but I'm not going to go too crazy with it. I'm basically using this to put the guitars, the yellow tracks of the guitars, a little more into the background. You can even pan the reverb reflections. And when that big chorus comes in, I want those guitars a little more pushed back even, just to sound like big but dense, even if they're not quite up front. And the, the keyboards, I put a lot of reverb on them because they're more of an ambient thing anyway. So I don't want them really in the forefront, I want them more in the background. So the more you send to reverb, the more something's going to sound like it is pushed back and the less reverb, the more upfront it's going to sound. Okay, so those are just a few tips. This mix, you know, I would work on it a lot more. I've just worked on it for a few minutes. Just put a few plugins in, a few EQs, a few compressors, and one reverb, and did some panning, some level balance. Uh, right now I'm mixing with headphones on because my interface is not working, which is not exactly ideal. But this, my mix is off to a better start just using a few of these tricks and I think that if some of you apply this some of these concepts your mixes can be that much better so I hope you're all gonna go back and check out the comments on your mixes both from me and from the other students and make some adjustments and uh, you'll have some really really good sounding stuff I think uh, the stuff I heard so far was pretty good just needed to be taken up one more level and then we're going to talk about mastering and we're going to take it even further. All right.